Hey guys, let's do our first example for polar coordinates. What we've got here is we've got a plane that's flying along at a constant speed. Let's highlight that. So constant speed, put V here. Now we're at a height of 10 kilometers and we're being tracked by a radar here on the ground at O. Now if theta, which is this angle right here, is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.02 radians per second, when theta is 60 degrees, we want to find our double dot and the magnitude of the velocity vector of the plane. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Now to get started, first thing you should do is establish your coordinate system. All right, that's what I always do first. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me redraw this picture here. All right, so here's O, and then I'm going to be out here. Here's my plane right here, this little dot. And I've got velocity. Looks like that. Now I need to figure out my U sub R and U theta. So where are those going to be? Well, remember, we said that U sub R was basically just going to extend out your radial line. Where here's my radial line right here, right? That's R. So all I need to do is just extend this out. All right, so there's U sub R. Now we said that the theta axis would point in the direction of increasing theta. All right, now let's look at this. So let's say that this pin right here is going to measure between the radar and the plane. All right, so I'm going to hold it fixed here at O. Now the plane is moving over this way, right? So as I keep trying to keep track of that, look at what's happening to that angle right here. All right, it's getting smaller. So that means the increasing direction is not going down. It's going to be going up. All right, so I'm going to put U theta going up in that direction. All right. So now we've got that established, and this is 60 degrees right here. Okay. All right, and one more thing. This angle right here, 60 degrees. So now that we've got that, let's write down what we know. We know H is 10. Now this right here, it tells us theta is decreasing at this rate. So if theta has this rate, that means that's theta dot. Okay, and decreasing means it's negative. So we're gonna have negative 0 0.02, and that's radians per second. In these calculations, you should always have radians per second or radians per second squared. All right, you shouldn't have degrees in here. Now, we also know theta, which is 60 degrees. Okay, now I want to find the magnitude of velocity. So let's go ahead and write down our equation for the velocity vector. So that's just r dot times u sub r plus r theta dot times u sub theta. All right. And now let's see what we can find. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to find R. R is going to be easy to find. So this distance between O and then the plane. So if you look, we know that H here is 10, right? So I can find R pretty easily just using a right triangle. So if you want, let's just draw it out this way. So here is the 60, here's R, and then that distance is H. Okay. So from that, if we write it out, we know h has to be r sine theta, because that's opposite. And then we know h is 10, so when you plug that in, you can find r. And r is 11.55 kilometers. All right, so now I've got this. Now if we look here, I need r, and then I need theta dot. I've already got theta dot, okay? So now using that, let's see what we can do. 
All right, I don't know anything about r dot either, if you notice. All right, so I need to do something to figure out how to find this velocity. Because I can't just take the magnitude of this because I don't know r dot at this point. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is let's look up here at this drawing. Now, we know that this is a velocity vector, so we can split that up into the two components, right? It has an r component and then it has a theta component. So we know that. So the r component is going to lie right here, and then the theta component is going to be right there. Okay? So now we've got that. Now let's look and see what we know about it. Let's start with VR. So VR, which we know is R dot, has to be equal to the R component of this velocity, right? And if we break this up into components, VR is equal to V cosine 60, right? So we have that relationship there. So again, all we're doing is we're breaking this velocity vector up into the r and theta components. That's all we're doing. So it's just like taking a force and splitting it into x and y components. We've just got different variables now. Okay, so don't get confused by it. That's all we're doing. So now we've got this. Now, I still can't really do anything with this because I don't know r dot, and I'm trying to find v. So I can't really use this yet. So now let's go ahead, let's look at v theta. Right, the theta component, if you look, that's going to be this opposite side, so it's going to be v sine theta. Right? And we'll write that in just a second. Before I do that, let's write this down first. So we got this r theta dot, and then that, like we said, is going to be the v sine theta, but now look at the direction. This is in the negative direction, right? So we're going to have negative v sine theta, which is 60 degrees. Okay, so now we are at this point. Now let's look at what we've got. And remember what we're trying to find. We're trying to find v, right? Because this is v. That's what it is. Now I've got v right here. Now don't I also know r and theta dot? I do, right? Because here's r. Here's theta dot. So that means if I multiply r times theta dot, I can set it equal to this and then solve for v. Okay? So let's do that. So we'll have 11.55 times the negative 0 0.02. That's going to equal negative v sine 60. And now you just solve for v. All right, so that's going to give you 0.2667. That's kilometers per second. And usually you want it in kilometers per hour. So if we convert this over, that's 3,600 seconds per hour. So then that gives us a V of 960.12 kilometers per hour. All right. So that's how you'd go about finding that. All right. And we did it that way because we didn't know r dot, All right? So this was the way to go. So anytime you think you get stuck, always go back to this, look at the components. All right, these components tell you a lot of information. And a lot of times students forget about those. They just totally forget that they can split these things up like we did right here. All right, now let's go and find the next thing, which is r double dot. Now that's going to come into play with the, r, the acceleration equation. So let's write out the general acceleration equation. So it's r double dot minus r theta dot squared times u sub r plus 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot. And that's the theta term. All right, so we've got that. 
Now, let's look and see what else we know about acceleration. What did it tell us about our velocity? Constant, right? So if the velocity or the speed is constant, what does that tell us about acceleration? It's got to be zero, right? So we can set that to zero. That means these two components are both equal to zero. Okay, now we want to find r double dot. So I'm going to use this term right here to find r double dot. So again, this term has to be equal to zero because acceleration is zero. So we can say zero equals r double dot minus r. Well, we already know what r is, 11.55. So we've got that times theta dot squared, right? So you're going to have that negative 0 0.02, square it. And now if you look, your only unknown here is r double dot, which is what we want. So now we just find r double dot. And that is 0 0.00462 kilometers per second squared. And if you want, you can convert that over to meters, which would be 4.62 meters per second squared. All right. So velocities are usually kilometers per hour. Accelerations, like what we have here, usually meters per second squared. All right. Now let's think about what this is. So basically what this is, if you think about what our dot is, our dot is basically the rate of change of this radial line. Okay, so the r double dot then would be the acceleration of this line, right? So it's just the second derivative of this radial distance, okay? So that's what your r double dot is. Okay, so I hope you like that problem. And the main point here that I wanna make sure you get is that you can split up these velocity and acceleration components just like we did here, All right? So break it down into the two components and then that gives you an extra piece of information, All right? I'll see y'all for another example in the next one.